بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay, so now in this section, we'll try to get into the static routing troubleshooting. So if you just quickly recollect what we discussed in the previous sections, in the previous sections, we started with understanding there are some of the prerequisite we need to know. That's what we discussed. And then also we have seen what are the things we need to keep in mind while troubleshooting the WAN connectivity. Because when you are troubleshooting the routing, because before you start troubleshooting the routing, we need to make sure that this link should be up and up. If the link is not up, then probably whatever the routing you implement, that is not going to work. So these are the common steps, whatever the type of routing you are using, whether static, dynamic, or what uh, OSP of EHRP, any protocol, the, these steps remain the same. Now, after that, probably the steps will, will differ. Like if I'm going with this, so this is our section, what we are going to see. So we'll try to understand if I'm using any static default routes or any static routes in my network, we'll try to see how to troubleshoot them. Probably in the later on sections, we also talk about how to troubleshoot OSPF and EHRP and BGB protocols also as we progress with the topics. So let's get started here. So there are a few things we discussed already. We discussed these prerequisite things we need to know in the previous sections. And also we need to ensure that we do have WAN connectivity that should be up and up. And what are the possible outputs and how to troubleshoot them. And after this, depending upon what type of routing we are using, the steps will vary. So in my case, I'm going to assume that I'm using static routing. And that's how we are going to uh, see in this section here. So we assume as if we are using a static or the default routes in our network. And there are some issues with the routing relating to static. And we'll see what are the possible issues and what are the things we need to check if, if the specific problem comes and what are the steps and all uh, we'll try to see. So whenever we start with troubleshooting uh, static routing, there are basic things we need to know. We need to know the configuration how to configure the static routes. And that's what uh, we, we, we should know. And we need to make sure that we do have a static route configured over there. Now, how we configure the static route, we give IP route, and then we define the destination network ID, let's say 192.168.2.network. Or let's say from the router one, I'm going to write for this one, 10.1.3.0. And then we need to define the subnet mask whatever the subnet mask, I'm assuming slash 24. And then we have to define the next hop IP address, 10.1.12.2, let's say. So whenever you configure the static route, you, you, must, you must have this static route configured. And based on this configuration, it is going to write this entry in the routing table. So how we can verify? We can verify the routing table by using show IP route. And you should see there will be a static route entry inside the routing table with a proper next stop. So we can either define the next stop or we can define the exit interface. So if there is no entry in the routing table, let's say the router one wants to forward the packet to this particular destination. And if, this, if there is no entry in the routing table, then automatically the router is going to drop the packet because the router is going to check the routing table and say that, okay, if I don't have a route, means the router is going to simply drop the packet here, uh, assuming there is no default route. So that's, that's how it's going to be. So whenever you do this configuration, there is one more thing we need to know. When you're doing this configuration, you always need to ensure that you give the correct static route. This, is, this should be correct, correct in the sense you need to define the proper network ID, and the correct subnet mask and other options. And we need to make sure that the next top address is also correct. Because when you're doing the configuration on the IWAS, the IWAS router is not going to tell you whether the ID is correct or not. Because in the static routing, administrator is going to configure the static route, which means you should know the correct network ID and the correct range, that is the subnet mask, and that should be defined uh, properly here. If you don't define this option properly, then there will be a problem. Okay, so these, these are the things we need to know, the prerequisite things before we uh, go ahead. 
So let's let's try to see what are the uh, possible issues with the static routing. So mainly when you are troubleshooting static routing, we need to check two things. The first thing is like the route must be in in the routing table. That's what I said. You must have the route in the routing table. And if you see the route, the route is in the routing table. If it is incorrect, that might be the problem. Maybe you misconfigured. That might be the one possible issue. Or you, you don't see the route at all. That is the next possible issue. So we'll try to uh, divide the static routing into two parts. And in the first part, we are going to see if there is a route, but if it is not correct, then what are the things we need to check? And the second possibility is the route is not at all present in the routing table. Assuming we configured correctly, still the route is not present, then what are the possible issues over there? So let's, let's see first, we'll start with the first option. Like we, we start with the troubleshooting saying that incorrect static routes in the routing table. So let's assume this is your topology. Let's say this is my router one. Like on the router one, we do have this static route configurations here. Let's say this is a static route configuration. And this is my destination network ID. Let's say this is my destination network ID. So we, we assume that as if there is an incorrect static route is going to appear in the routing table. When I say show IP route, it's not showing me the um, correct static route, let's say. So what are the things we need to check? How we, how we are going to start with? So the first thing we need to check is the subnet max error. Generally, subnet max error in the sense here, what we need to check is the range and the network ID. So here we are defining the network range. This is my network ID. So we need to make sure that the network ID is correct because if I'm using 10.1.3.0 slash 24 means that is my actual network. And in case if I'm writing 10.1.33.0, let's say maybe a typing error or maybe you, you miscalculated, maybe you thought it is 33. So that might be the possibility. So if you misconfigure any uh, wrong network ID, that might be the possible issue. Because if you see incorrect static dot means it's, it's manually configured. So most likely you typed it wrong or maybe a typo error or maybe you calculated it wrong. That might be the case. Or it can be the subnet mask as well, because when you are, when you're trying to do this, we also need to make sure that whatever the subnet mask we are using, that has to be correct. Like in this case here, if we just try to see, this is my subnet mask. Right. So this is my submit mask. And as per my topology here, if you if you just observe, it is using 10.1.3.24 means it's it has to be slash 24. But it is written something different here. So it's not slash 24. You can see it's 255, uh, 255, 255, 248. It's something slash 29. So if it is incorrect subnet mask means automatically it's going to define the wrong range of addresses and that may impact the communication with some of the specific servers here. Like in this example, if you compare this example, like there are two FTP servers. Again, I'll, I'll try to get into troubleshooting tasks a little bit later on with some configurations as well. So the first thing we need to uh, ensure that we are giving the correct network ID and the subnet mask, which defines the proper range. That might be the uh, first possible issue. Now, the second is maybe you have defined the next stop IP address uh, wrong. Maybe the next stop IP address is not correct. So if, if you see this example here, so in this example, on the router one, from the router one to reach this particular destination, uh, my next stop address should be this one, which means it has to be 10.1.12. As per my topology, so if you misconfigure the next stop IP address, that might be the issue, or maybe you you have one more router connected here, and you have given let's say 10.0.15.5. Maybe this is router five, and there is one more path from here, 
or maybe you know maybe there is no path here so if you are given any wrong next stop then that might be the case because you see the static route in the routing table still you see because the next stop is valid but it is in a wrong direction because the next stop will decide the direction where the packet should be sent so the next thing is like we need to see does the next stop I, 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 IP address identify the correct router so this is the same thing what I discussed so actually these are two different parts if you if you just verify here maybe you have given a wrong IP address because sometimes if you give a wrong IP next stop IP that might be the case and this is actually a wrong direction so maybe you have given a router file so these are these are the two issues which are relating to next stop itself maybe you have given a wrong next stop address or maybe a wrong direction so next thing is like is the outgoing interface correct and referring to the local router so there is an alternate way you can configure so whenever I do the configuration there are two ways either you can define the next stop address or you can define your own exit interface so mostly when you are using point to point connections we we can still use exit interface which is something you might you can still use of course if you're using point to multi point interfaces like point to multi point connections you don't really use uh, exit interface so if i'm using exit interface we need to make sure that we are giving the correct interface because the interface should be correct so most of the things relates to the configuration here because here most of the configuration is done manually so we have to make sure that we we do the correct configurations so we need to make sure that we give the correct network id and the mask we need to make sure that we are giving the correct next stop ip address and we need to ensure that uh, we are giving the right direction in the right router that is next router like instead of router 5 i should give router 2 in case because as per my topology this is the way it should go and if i'm giving exit interface make sure that you're using this g1 by 0 not this interface so these are the specific things we need to check while uh, troubleshooting incorrect static routes. Now incorrect static routes, as I said, the static routes do exist in your routing table, but they are not correct. So they are misconfigured uh, in general. Now the next thing we need also need to check the second part. So in the second part, what we are going to do is we are going to assume that the static routing configuration is perfect like the configuration part is okay but you still see the route is not coming in the routing table okay so in the previous case in the first case what we have seen we have seen incorrect static route you see the static route in the routing table but it is incorrect now the configuration seems to be correct but still uh, you you see there is no route in the routing table that's what the second uh, possibility now whenever you you see these things there are a couple of things we need to check the first thing is we need to make sure that the next hop router because in in my case here in my example like in my case let's say i'm writing a static route with 10.1.3.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 as per my topology here this is the slash 24 and the next hop address is 10.1.12.2 so this is my next stop so which means 10.1.12.2 is my next stop means it is pointing to my exit interface g0 by 0 g1 by 0 sorry g1 by 0 so we have to verify this interface should be up and up because if there is a route configured there is a static route or whatever the route and to whatever the interface it is pointing to if that interface is down then automatically the router is not going to install the route in the routing table so the prerequisite for a route to make it into the routing table means when you say show ip route we should see the route in the routing table and that is only possible if it is having a valid next hop so what you have to do you have to ensure that the next hop is valid the next hop should be valid means the next hop should be up and up that's a primary condition and again if you see this interface is not up and up and if it is showing up and down or something like down down we have already covered what are the things we need to check 
in our previous section where we have seen how to troubleshoot the WAN connectivity based on the status messages. And those things will vary depending upon what type of WAN connection we are using. So probably we are not going to see this troubleshooting already we covered that in the previous section. Now the other possibility is uh, the local router must have a route to the next hop address, which means if I'm writing a router one, let's say sometimes you, you define a next hop, let's say in my case 10.1.12.2, this next hop address should be in the routing table, which means when you say show IP route connected, we normally see this route as C, C connected on G1 by 0 interface. That's how it shows up. So sometimes if you're using, uh, let's say if you're using any other type of WAN connections like GRE or any other connections, then whatever the next hop you're using, that next stop must be reachable. Now reachable in the sense that should be present in the routing table. So these are the two things we need to check while troubleshooting with uh, with static routing if the route do not appear. So the static route troubleshooting divides into two parts. The first part as I discussed, maybe you see the route but it is incorrect. And these are the things we need to check. And the second part is you, see, you don't see the route at all. If you don't see the route at all, you need to again, um, and again, as I said, this part is uh, something um, I'm assuming that the configuration is correct. Okay, of course you have to verify the configurations as well. But I'm assuming if the configuration is correct, then if still you don't see the route, which means that there might be some next stop related issues. So that's how it can be divided. Anyway, I'll, I'll try to show you some, some examples with our trouble tickets probably in our next videos, a little bit more uh, with a practical verification as well.